Hey everyone, getting out here. I've got a little bit of time before breakfast, before the boys get up. So I wanted to show you one of my favorite swim jigs because you guys know I love swim jigs. This is the Dirty Jigs California Swim Jig. This is a deep water swim jig. Specifically here, I've got the three quarter ounce in the Alabama Bream with a three inch Berkeley Pit Boss. Guys, this is meant to be fished more like a deep water crankbait or a you know dragging bait uh, versus a typical swim jig that you'd be fishing through really thick shallow water cover. This is a bait that will get you a swim jig presentation in areas that you normally can't fish it. It's great for deep weed lines, great for uh, fish and brush piles, even if you've got some deep rock. If you're looking to bring a bait through heavy cover and deep water weedless, you need to check out a California swim jig. Let's go see if we can catch a few before breakfast. in here all right beautiful California swim jig bass nice two probably two and a quarter fat healthy chunky fish we'll get him back all right guys I want to point out a couple of things here for you on the old California swim jig so I'm doing a couple of things. One, these fish are keying in on almost entirely just bluegill, lots of small bluegill. So I trim the skirt up. I also then add a small three inch Berkeley pit boss. And when I rig it, I rig it so it's parallel on the hook shank versus riding horizontal, which is different than what most people would do. But I'm trying to create the profile of a bluegill. You can see that's a short, bulky bait. I like to go with this is the Alabama Bream color, which is really good for matching bluegill. I throw a dark, uh, a dark pit boss on a lot of times for some contrast. And some of the fish here do have a real dark color. So I feel like it does a good job at mimicking them. Uh, just to rig the bait up a little bit differently. Like I said, I trim the skirt up and then I take some of the skirt off. You can see, hopefully I've cut some of those back. And then I trim it down too, so it's about an eighth of an inch over the tip. Now, when you're fishing deep grass like this, I don't need a super stout weed guard. The thing is, this bait is extremely versatile, and I'll probably show you a little bit. There's some deep cribs I might fish in a little bit as well, but um, you can you can fish a California swim jig in so many different ways. You know, I've really been concentrating on these deep weed lines. Boat sitting in 14 feet right now. I'm just going along this weed line and what I'm doing and one of the reasons I like this bait so much is because you can throw it out and you can fish it like a jig you can fish it like a swim jig and you can fish it like a crankbait um, you know generally what I'm doing is I throw it out let it fall to the bottom and then I'm either going to do a real slow retrieve like a crankbait where I'm trying to just get it to swim right through all the individual grass stalks and, and really tick off the bottom when I get buried in. I'll give it a good pop, almost like you would a rattle trap. Um, but that, that's a really good way to generate strikes. That's what I was doing on the last one. So that's one way I'll retrieve it. Another way is I'll throw it out and I'll kind of do that burn stop. So I always let it go to the bottom. This bait is a three quarter ounce jig. So it's a heavy jig, it's meant to stay deep. It's meant to be fished through deep, you know, deep weeds, deep grass, that type of thing. So I let it go to the bottom and then I'll just give it a burn, let it fall back, burn, let it fall back. You know, that's basically a, a good way to generate deep bites anytime you're at. And what's good about this is it falls into that weed and then I'll, you know, I'll pop it right out every time. And what I'm fishing here isn't like super thick milfoil. What it is is it's sand grass with some mixed in cabbage. You can see, maybe you can see that. There's a stalk of cabbage right there coming out of 14 feet. Uh, 
So it's definitely a, uh, a retrieve style that works extremely well. Uh, the last one is going to be more of a sweeping motion where I'm going to cast it out, let it go to the bottom again, and I'm just going to kind of keep it swimming, but kind of just keep it moving too. You know, almost like it's just a lazy bluegill just kind of swimming along. Uh, but generally speaking, if I'm trying to mimic bluegill, I'm going to go with that sh shorter, fatter, pit boss style trailer, almost your your creature style trailer. If I was fishing, say, around, uh, you know, shad and cisco and alewife and blueback herring, I might go with something more of a longer profile like your old boot tail swimmers. And that's a little pike, which you catch doing this too. That'll work. Um, so yeah, your profile's your profile's a big deal, I do feel like. I'm not, not saying I wouldn't catch fish if I was throwing a boot tail. I just don't think I'd be catching as many fish. So, let's get back to it. I want to catch a few more. It's a chilly morning, guys. Can't see him, he's in the sun, but he feels good. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. They are so healthy here. It's probably a three and a quarter just because of your belly, mister. All right. Jump force. All right. There he goes. Okay. A couple of things, too, to point out here. Your equipment is relatively important. Uh, you can get a bit away with some good versatile stuff here. So I'm throwing, this is a seven foot three uh, three and a half power. It's the MB, uh, NMB 873 and a half made by MHX. So it's a custom rod that I build. <clears throat> so it's a medium heavy, little longer, nice stiff rod, but still a soft tip that allows the fish to eat the bait. And then I'm pairing up with an Abu Garcia Revo MG Extreme. This is an 8.0 to one. I want something a little faster so I can pick up line. It allows me to fish the bait in a lot of different ways. And then I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon, which to me in this clear water is something I definitely want to be doing. If you're fishing super heavy grass, you for sure could switch to braid. Uh, but in this case, you know, like I said, I'm just kind of swimming it through stocks, swimming around some different grass. Uh, nothing super heavy where I can't use fluorocarbon. But that makes a big difference, the right rod and reel combo, because you do want something that's got the stiff backbone, but a, a soft tip to it. Another close to a right around that 14 inch size limit. They're eating it good. The uh, so some of your prime targets for fishing a California swim jig or a deep swim jig like this. So I've got a shallow flat way up there, as you can see. I'm fishing them in 16 foot of water right here, but it tapers off, so we've got a nice weed line edge. So your weed lines are great. If you've got some sort of points that come off, those are really good. Um, 
I like trenches too. You know, this isn't a straight weed line. There's a little bit of a trench. It's a depression where the weeds kind of start to, they don't just start. They taper, slowly taper from shallow water into deep water. So it creates a lot of holes in the weeds. Oh man, that was another bite. And then what I've actually got is I've got the bowl shaped taper right here. And then a little point that comes off. So these fish are actually kind of, that one was sitting on a point in that last bite too. Um, but it's really one of those things, it's such a versatile bait. I mean, if I had to jump up and start pitching trees with it, I could potentially do that. I mean, it's a little heavier than what I'd like, but I could do it if I wanted to. So, I mean, I've got, you can go fish deep brush piles, you can fish the weed lines. Anywhere you want to fish a weedless bait, you can do it. It really is a versatile bait, and it's one that uh, is starting to get a lot more popular. You know, the swim jig up here in the north country is one of the places where it started. That fish got my tails on the last one. Um, you know, but it's pretty much a shallow water swim jig. And the California swim jig by Dirty Jigs came out, and that's got a lot of popularity out west. Uh, but it's really starting to pick up steam all over throughout the country because of its uh, ability to catch deep water fish and do it in a very weedless manner. You know, a lot of people would throw a jig around, but having something that's got more of the tendency to swim will allow you to present the bait in a lot different manner than a normal jig. Well, there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video on the California swim jig and opened up your eyes to the deep water swim jig. There's a very good bite for that that exists. So thanks for watching. I gotta go have some breakfast with the boys and then we'll probably come right back out on the water. Anyways guys, stay tuned. We'll have another video coming out tomorrow.